It is late Thursday evening, the 9th of October, out across the Western Pacific, and all eyes continue to be on Super Typhoon Vongfong as it approaches southern Japan. We are starting today's update with the latest forecast track from the Japan Meteorological Agency, and I will say that I do have some disagreement here with the official forecast track. You can see that they take the center of the storm just to the east of Okinawa and even the Amami Islands before it makes its way towards the mainland of Japan. However, data that has become available over the last 12 to 24 hours would suggest that things are potentially trending more toward the west, which would imply that the center of the storm could pass between Okinawa and the Amami Islands before turning toward the northeast into southern Kyushu. As we switch over to the latest update from the United States Joint Typhoon Warning Center, we can start to see some big differences in the tracks. The latest JTWC forecast track is much farther west. It shows the center of Vong Fong passing directly through the island chain and making its way into the far eastern East China Sea before moving into southern Kyushu. It should also be noted that the latest initial intensity has decreased from 145 knots to 135 knots but that still qualifies Vong Fong as a formidable Category 5 super typhoon. Now as Vong Fong continues to move more so toward the north-northwest, we are still anticipating additional weakening, but the typhoon will still likely be in upwards of Category 2 or potentially even low in Category 3 intensity, so this is still going to be a severe typhoon as it passes through. A quick look at evening satellite imagery still shows that we have very good symmetry with the tropical system, so the structure of the storm is still well intact, but the one sign that the storm has weakened compared to this time 24 hours ago is that we're not seeing quite as much in the way of those dark red colors, which would indicate that the cloud tops are very high and the thunderstorms are very intense. So this is a sign that some dry air may be wrapping into the inner circulation of the storm. But again, any weakening over the next 48 to 72 hours is expected to be very slow. This is the latest forecast model run from the American GFS. And as we see by tomorrow morning, the winds along the coast here are going to be intensifying. We're looking at at least minimal tropical storm force winds by this time. And conditions are only going to deteriorate as we go into Friday night and Saturday. It looks as though as we go into Saturday evening and Saturday night is when this storm could be potentially making its direct impact on some of these southernmost islands. Of course, this run is now taking the center of the storm directly over Naha, which would be bad news as this is where the highest population concentration is. Now, I will say the majority of the models are still a tad to the east of Naha, which can make all the difference between receiving moderate to high-end tropical storm force winds versus potentially severe typhoon force intensity. So there still could be some very big differences in the overall impacts depending on where this track ends up, and only 50 to 75 nautical miles can just make huge impacts on what is going to be expected across your area. I would say overall the highest threat is going to be a little bit more toward the north and northeast out across the Imami Islands because even if it does take this southernmost track or westernmost track, this would still place the Imami Islands within the severe northeast quadrant of the typhoon. And again, these northeast quads are usually the worst quadrant to be in. And the flip side of this scenario is that some of the more eastern models still verify. And in that case, the center of the circulation would still pass directly over these areas, which would still mean severe typhoon force winds. This is a different model. This is the ECMWF European model. And this particular model solution is showing exactly what I talked about. It shows the eye of the storm remaining a little to the east of Naha, but this would place the track directly over the Imami Islands. So regardless of which scenario you pick, it still looks like the Imami Islands overall have the highest likelihood of severe typhoon force winds. So certainly if you are in Naha, you want to brace for the worst case scenario and out across the Imami Islands, there's really absolutely no reason not to be preparing for at least 90 knot sustained winds, heavy rainfall, potentially localized storm surge, especially along those coastal areas. So now is the time to make your final preparations. As we advance this forecast into Sunday and Monday, this is going to be the turn for Kyushu. And again, you're still going to be looking at moderately strong winds, especially along the coastal areas. But at this point, I think the main concern is going to evolve from a wind threat more so over to a flooding threat, especially in areas of higher terrain. 
So that wraps up this evening's quick summary on Vong Fong. Due to time constraints, we do have to wrap up the video right here. We will have another video post within the next 12 to 24 hours, and the next one or two model cycles should be able to tell all the difference that we need to know in terms of what islands will face the highest risk of witnessing some of the strongest winds that Vong Fong has to offer. So in the meantime, again, make your final preparations now. Conditions are already somewhat poor, and they will continue to deteriorate over the next 24 to 36 hours.